Most of the time, grinding in World of Tanks sucks. Stock tanks, crappy crews, and no credits is a complete pain. Sure, a premium account makes grinding a much smoother process, but I understand some of you are prideful masochists and are playing with a standard account instead. Thankfully, there are ways to make grinding easier and faster. Most of the time, people will either advise the use of alcohol or just tell you to, quote, play better, but that's silly, and I'd much rather use game mechanics to increase credit and experience output instead. Unfortunately, some of those mechanics are more complicated for users who prefer to play without a premium account. Because of this, I'm of course making a video with different sections again. One section will explain how credit and experience mechanics work for my fellow nerds out there. One will give general tips that can be applied to everyone, premium account or no, while the final two sections will be specific to either premium or non-premium users. Skip to whatever sections you think will be useful to you. A lot of this information is pretty straightforward, but I hope that you'll find out something new. First off, credit and experience mechanics. This section really isn't all that useful, as it can be summarized under yield saying of play better, but for some reason I wanted to make this video take even longer to make, so here goes. Experience and credits are calculated independently, meaning that they each have different variables affecting how many you get within each battle. These are awarded at the end of the battle depending on how high you scored through these variables, and then are multiplied by the experience bonus, whether you have a premium account, and all that stuff outside of the battle. I won't go into every single variable for each, but here's a basic idea of the key differences. Experience is awarded through doing damage, detecting enemies, with a bonus to detecting artillery, spotting damage, inflicting criticals, getting kills, winning the battle, surviving the battle, capping, or defending your cap. Keep in mind these variables that I am listing right here on the screen is not all of the possibilities. There are some mechanics that are as minor as doing damage within 200 meters which gives you a small bonus to experience. Doing damage or getting kills against a tank higher than you in tier will give you bonus experience. You will gain experience for battle hero or epic rewards as well, but only if you lose. This means that if you lose while earning an epic medal, meaning the medals displayed on the right side of the credits and experience totals on the post-battle results, it will give you the same experience that you would have had on a win. Which is why, on the losing team, if you see a player with an epic medal, you'll notice that their experience total is a lot higher than the rest of their team. One thing to understand, though, is how assistance damage impacts experience. When you are spotting and getting assistance damage in any form, you gain 50% of the experience gained by those doing the damage. On the other side of things, you will only earn 50% experience if you aren't spotting your targets for yourself, so you're negating 50% of the experience you would have gotten if you were, say, on the front lines. Now this may be a very difficult mechanic to take use of if you're in a sniping tank destroyer, but for medium tanks and heavy tanks, there is a reason why you're designed to be on the front lines. You're not going to be gaining nearly as much experience by sitting back. Credits, on the other hand, are much easier to explain, since they have slightly fewer variables than experience. There is no bonus to credit gain from kills, critical hits, capture points, if you kill anything higher than you in your tier, defending the base, or surviving. You still gain a bonus to credits if you win, but the bonus only applies to the credits you gained upon entering the battle, not to the credits you earned throughout the battle. What you can take away from all this is that for credit farming, make your shots count. You don't gain any credits from simply hitting enemy vehicles, you need to do damage to make the cost of each shot count. This also applies for critical hits. You are not gaining any extra credits for applying critical hits. You need to make sure that you are doing actual damage. Also, while cap points themselves do not give you extra credits, capping to completion does. Anyone in the capture circle when the capture is complete receives a flat sum of credits. So that's all the nerdy stuff out of the way. If you want to look at the best source I could find for this and read all of the nitty gritty details for yourself, I will link that in the description below. Don't worry too much about keeping track of all that, just remember the golden rule of play a little better. So here's how we can actually improve our chances of gaining more experience and credits. First off, make your shots count. Like I said in the last section, each shot costs a decent amount of credits, particularly at higher tiers. Make sure that you are maximizing the chance of your shots hitting and penetrating the target. Block maps you dislike. You can do this in the main menu, and you get one blocked map as a standard player and two as a premium player. Block maps that don't suit tanks you happen to be grinding, or just block Paris because it's a piece of sh Invest in a tier 8 premium. Yeah, I know giving wargaming our money and all that, but premiums are fantastic for two things. Credit making and crew grinding. And no, I did not forget about the importance of crew grinding. Crews are just as, if not more important than getting improved modules, equipment, and vehicles. If you are starting a new line, it's a good idea to see if there's a premium available for you to that line. Premium tanks allow you to train a crew in them while they remain truly trained to their original tank. To explain that a bit better, most crews need to be retrained when switched between vehicles. Premium tanks don't require that as long as the tank you are switching from is of the same nation and tank type as your premium. 
and I'm aware of the new crew changes that are coming out. And from the looks of it, and from the sounds of it, yes, this system will still stay in place. Premium tanks will still be used as crew trainers. So yeah, at least one premium is an amazing investment. The best credit makers, in my humble opinion, are the T-54 Mod 1, also known as the T-54 First Prototype, the T-265 Patriot, the Low, or the Lerva, the whatever it is, the German Tier 8 Heavy that no one can agree on how to pronounce, and even the new Basanti is quite good at making credits. Look for premiums that have either high penetrating standard shells like the Stritzwagen S1, or have extremely cheap shells such as the T265. Play in platoons. Not only does this help you win more, it now grants you a percentage bonus to your profits while in a platoon. Just don't spam invite people when the battle begins for platooning, it's a complete pain. Maximize booster efficiency. This is pretty simple. You are given credit, experience, free experience, and crew experience boosters for pretty much just existing in World of Tanks. Use the one hour boosters if you plan on playing for one hour, and use two hours if you plan on playing for longer. Maximize their efficiency, so don't use experience boosters when you are playing premium tanks that don't need anything unlocked. Use blueprints and free experience to skip tanks you don't want to play. There are a lot of lines that just suck, and there's no getting around it. The worst one that commonly causes mass suffering would be the British heavy tanks prior to tier 8. Some people who just want to see the world burn may enjoy those kinds of lines, and that's perfectly fine, as long as I don't have to play with them. Those are the tanks that you want to save your blueprints for, or whatever tanks that you really don't enjoy, as those are the tanks you most want to avoid. At the same time, try to use free XP for modules as much as possible instead of spending it on reaching the next tank. Again, the exception to this rule would be if you are absolutely miserable in whatever tank you're in, but keep in mind it is almost always worse to be in a stock tank than it is to be in a terrible but fully upgraded one. If you absolutely cannot avoid playing in a tank that you completely despise, play it only to win one battle each day. There is always a bonus for winning that resets each day, and it'll cut your grinding time down by half at minimum. Going along with this last one, it's very much okay to be doing multiple lines at a time because that means you can get the times 2 experience bonus for each of those vehicles. Take advantage of daily missions to gain credits and experience. Again, premium players have access to premium missions, but you can still earn boosters, blueprints, and credits by completing daily missions or possibly even event missions that may be going on. If you're in a terrible tank at tier 6 or 8, consider poisoning an innocent stronghold team by grinding it out there. Skirmishes don't affect your stats if you care about that sort of thing, but also allow you to amass credits and experience quickly. Just try not to upset too many people by showing up in a stocked 40 TP. Buy equipment, consumables, and vehicles in bulk when sales go up. Every once in a while, the glorious wargaming overlords deem it so that the EU servers will get a 50% discount on consumables. And about two weeks later, the North American server also sometimes gets a 25% discount. Use these events to stockpile on your medkit needs. Sell large repair kits, large medkits, and unwanted cosmetics. Large medkits and repair kits sell for 10,000 credits each, which just goes to show how ridiculously expensive they are. I highly recommend against using them. Instead, sell them for a constant profit when you earn them. Likewise, if you go to exterior, emblems, and then sort by those you own, you will find that you can sell a decent amount of your earned emblems. Those who have been playing for a while most likely have enough emblems stockpiled to make several million credits instantly. Know when you can skip unnecessary modules. This usually comes down to three things, tracks, radios, and guns. Particularly at lower tiers, there are multiple gun options per tank. Pick which one you want before starting to grind, then only take that singular gun. Radios are almost entirely useless to grind out. Your stock radio 99 times out of 10 will be more than enough to function for all your radio needs, especially at higher tiers. Finally, tracks are a bit tricky. Your vehicle's stock tracks may have a high enough load limit to support your modules and equipment without the need for an upgrade, and skipping tracks is not too big of an issue for most vehicles. You could check this by either clicking Preview Vehicle in-game and customizing your fully upgraded tank, but with only stock tracks, or by going to tanks.gg and doing the same in any vehicle details window. I'm sure there are other ways to go about checking, but these are the two methods I've used. Another thing about the load limit. If you are right on the edge of needing to upgrade tracks to fit more advanced modules and have some credits to burn, try mounting a spall liner. It gives a percentage bonus to your carrying capacity, allowing you to possibly fit that next module. Just keep in mind that you are sacrificing both credits and an equipment slot for this trick. Look up ways to improve your gameplay in each tank. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm saying play better, but it really is the easiest way to make grinding easier. Watch videos on tanks you have or are going to get soon to learn their playstyle and potential equipment and crew setups you may take. Stock grinds both through modules and crews are miserable. The best thing you can do is save up as much free XP as you can to skip the worst of the stock grinds. The easiest way to go about this is to win tournaments. Each tournament typically gives gold as well as regular free XP. 
even if you don't win. Golden Free XP makes grinding through stock tanks bearable, if not entirely skippable. Check the box next to Crew to speed up crew training. All of the regular experience you could earn in that premium that could be potentially turned into free XP with gold will instead go right back into the crew to increase their skill level. This makes getting a good crew a much faster process. Only invest in equipment on tanks at around tier 5 or 6 unless you are rolling in credits. If you can afford it, get as much of the best equipment for your tank as you can to improve your performance and therefore income in the vehicle. Just keep in mind equipment can be very expensive, especially when it comes to transferring between tanks. Purchase based on your budget. Use shells effectively. This does not mean never fire gold, because you are only hurting yourself with that mindset thinking that gold is the most toxic feature of the game. Gold shells are available for credits and therefore are available to you. Fire standard shells whenever penetration is possible, but for certain situations, such as facing a mouse head on, standard shells simply aren't enough. You will lose more credits bouncing standard shells than you will penetrating and killing with gold shells. Just keep in mind that all shell types are different. If you want a guide to shell types themselves, you're in the wrong place. I'll put a link to the Wargaming guide in the description if you really want more information on that. Sell tanks only when you are done grinding through them. I made the mistake while I was grinding of constantly selling vehicles to purchase a shiny new tier 8 or 9 I unlocked, which is a complete net loss of credits. Each tank sells for only 50% of its worth. If you purchase a tank, be sure you are going to play it through to its completion. When you purchase a new tank in a line, I recommend selling the previous vehicle and transferring the crew up to your new tank to keep the same skills you've been working on. Try to train the crew with credits wherever possible. If you are absolutely rolling in gold, you can spend the gold for the 100% crew training. Personally, I don't think the crew training is worth the gold price. It will take a fairly short time to train your crew up from the credit priced 80% to the full 100%. Don't be afraid to keep a tank that you have finished grinding through to finish your next crew skill. If your crew has a 99% trained brothers in arms, get the next skill before moving them up into the vehicle in the next line. I realize that this tip will probably be outdated by the time the new crew update comes out, but depending on how that system goes, this still might be a good idea. Save gold by only putting camo on the hull of your vehicle. Players usually earn camo sets from simply playing the game. You put this camo on your hull, turret, and gun on most vehicles. However, you get the same camo bonus of 3% on a vehicle by just applying the camo to the hull, allowing you to save up to 2 camo decals per vehicle. You get a camo boost, save extra camo, and can display to the world what an efficient and fashion-challenged player you are. Survive longer. This is by far the best tip I can give you all. Better players will typically survive longer into the battle than other players. These are also the players that possess the highest average experience in credit games with each battle. If you survive longer into a battle, you will have more opportunities for damage, spotting, and kills than if you play gloriously but foolishly early on. As always, when I mention this tip, I have to specify that this does not mean camping players makes a good player. It is incredibly difficult to keep the balance between suicidal play and damage efficient play, so you have to be playing as best as you can. So, yeah, screw it. I'm back to saying play better, but it's damn important. And now for premium players only. Premium players have access to all the techniques in the previous section, but with just a little bit of a boost and a couple extra features. That's why the section happens to be so short. Premium players don't really have to worry too much about keeping their credits in tow. First off, activate your second blocked map. With Paris blocked, get Berlin or Ensk on there. Max out your 750,000 credits a week vault. It's an enormous boost to your coffers that should be taken advantage of. If you're more worried about credits, fire less gold. If you're on the hunt for experience though, fire gold a little bit more liberally. Because you can make a fairly consistent profit as long as you hit your shots, you have a little bit more flexibility, and let's be honest, a lot of tanks have a real problem with gold just being better than standard shells. Wait until the later stages of your grinding session to apply your times 3 victories. They only expire when you play in the same vehicle multiple times, so if you plan to play a variety of tanks, wait until the end of your session. Then check back in your battle log and find the 5 best matches that you need an experience boost on. Then apply your daily boosters to those matches. Tier 8 premiums make a ridiculous profit if you are running a premium account and credit boosters. If you find yourself running low, take some time to play nothing but tier 8 premiums to quickly refill your coffers. Finally, let's go over how it works for non-premium players. There's two ways to go about as a free-to-play player. The easiest way, which in my opinion is also the most efficient way, is to be a free-to-play premium player. Here's how that would work. Tournaments. Tournaments are run almost, if not every day of every week, and each tournament has prizes for multiple places. They require no buy-in fee and most last less than an hour. The first place prize will pay out around 800 gold for each tournament. For other placings, it's understandably less, but will still give you a decent amount of gold. If you play and win about three tournaments each month, you would make 2,400 gold per month, or 28,800 gold per year. 
In order to win most tournaments, you only have to beat five other teams. For our purposes, you'd only need an average of 2,000 gold each month for 24,000 gold per year. The reason for this is in-game, you can purchase 360 days, meaning one year, of premium time for 24,000 gold. This may seem like an overwhelming and impossible number to gain through tournaments, but either a good player alone or an average player with the help of others can gain this much gold simply by participating in wargaming tournaments, not even once every weekend. This way, you won't have to worry about difficulties in not having a premium account, and would have access to the weekly 750,000 credits, extra map blocking slot, premium daily missions, bonus experience and credit gain each match, and the applicable times through experience bonus to victories. I fully recommend going this route, as it is much easier to play this game with a premium account. It is possible to play it free-to-play still to this day, but it is extremely difficult, and that is probably why you're here, because of how difficult it is to be able to run a standard account in this game. However, if you don't want to go about that route and instead want to avoid tournament grinding, here's the way to play as a free-to-play player. A lot more grinding. There's a few ways to make non-premium play a little bit easier. Fire less gold for credit profit. Gold shells are expensive, and it's very difficult to make a profit when you use them extensively without a premium profit. Instead, focus on playing vehicles with high base penetration. Carry a few shells of gold, but avoid using them against anything that you can make do against with standard shells. Try to make credits at lower tiers. Tier 5 is typically the highest credit profit you can get without either premium tanks or a premium account, though it changes vehicle by vehicle. Obviously, if you are able to invest in some kind of premium vehicle, try to use that as your main source of credits. Again, I recommend getting a premium tank through either tournament gold and purchasing a tank through the tech tree, or through the premium campaign events Wargaming hosts every once in a while, where you can complete time-consuming missions for premiums within a limited time. Avoid playing tier 10 whenever possible. You won't make credits at tier 10 without a premium account. I'm sorry, you're not going to. You may accomplish it in some battles, but it is nowhere near consistent enough to make continuous play at tier 10, or even tier 9, worth it. Here's the unfortunate thing about grinding, free to play in particular. It sucks. There's no way around it. Grinding takes a long time, and it will seem a majority of the time is spent playing painful vehicles. While these tips cannot make grinding fast or easy, they can at least make grinding faster and easier. And with that, hey, you've watched until the end of the video. As a reward, you can have a say in the next topic I upload on. There's a couple ideas I'm working on, so if you click the top right button here, you can vote on which topic you'd like to see covered next. If you think of a topic not on the list, leave it in the comments and I'll try to get to it eventually. This video was requested, so there's your proof that I read the comments. I know this video is a bit more basic than some were hoping for, which is why I plan on making the next video a bit more skill-based and complex. And by a bit more, I mean a lot more, because I will admit I'm actually pretty interested in some of the things I'm getting requested about. Also, if you're wondering why the Tier 6 Stronghold Guide video is not listed in the poll, that is because it's taking a damn long time. I was going to make that one instead of this one for this month, but it's a lot of information. So I'm working on that one while I'm doing all these other videos. Anyway, thank you all for your patience with my pathetic upload schedule, and happy tanking.